Welcome to Electron Online. And just when we thought that it couldn't get any more complicated with all the motion of the Earth and the Sun and the precessional motion and the rotational motion and so forth, it turns out there are two different kinds of years as well. There's what we call a tropical year and a sidereal year. And a tropical year, you can think of it as a solar year relative to the Sun. So if we think about when the Sun appears at the vernal equinox, at the autumnal equinox, at the summer solstice, at the winter solstice, that doesn't exactly occur every year exactly to the second. And let me explain. So here, let's take a look at what we call the tropical year. The tropical year, or solar year, if you want to think of it that way, it's called the sun's position relative to the vernal equinox. So what happens is, you would think, that every year at the exact same moment, exact same day, the 21st of September, the 3rd, the 21st of March, we hit either the autumnal equinox, we hit the vernal equinox. That's not exactly true because what happens is as the Earth goes around the Sun in its merry way every about 365 and a quarter days, the Earth also precesses. And that precessional motion, even though it's very slow and it takes 26,000 years for the Earth to make one complete rotation of its axis like that, as a precessional motion, it does affect the time and the date when the Earth hits the vernal equinox. And it turns out, every year, the vernal equinox is reached about 20 minutes sooner than a complete year, which means that a, a tropical year is actually 20 minutes shorter than a side real year, a real year, the amount of time that it takes for the Earth to make one complete trip around the Sun relative to the stars. So if we hit the vernal equinox 20 minutes earlier every year than every three years, it would be an hour earlier, and every 30 years it would be hmm, 10 hours earlier, and every 72 years the vernal equinox would occur one day earlier. The effect of that would be that every 72 years the summer and the winter would happen one day sooner. And then eventually, if enough time goes by, what would happen then is in the northern hemisphere, the summer would be in January and the winter would be in July. And that, of course, would not be a good thing. So to combat that, we've actually been adding about a day per hundred years to the calendar to set everything back to where it needed to be so that the winter always starts on on uh, December the 21st and the summer always starts on June the 21st. To keep that in sync we need to add a day basically every 72 years and so they've been adding about two days every three centuries to kind of keep it on track and I'm sure that they will continue to do so so that the northern hemisphere will always have summer in July and August and the winter in January and February and December and so forth. But what's really interesting is when you think about it, let's take a look at what the side real year then really is. Side, com side real comes from the, the word sidus, which means stars. And so the complete rotation of the Earth around the Sun relative to the stars, so when it makes one complete rotation, it's again exactly facing the same stars, or a better way to say it is the line from the Earth to the Sun to the stars will be exactly the same after that period in time that takes exactly 365 days, 6 hours, and 9.1626 minutes. It's amazing you can measure that accurately. In other words, it's about 9 minutes and 10 seconds. So a year is 365 and a quarter day. 6 is about a quarter of 24, but it's actually slightly more than a quarter of a day. It's an additional 9 minutes and 10 seconds beyond a quarter day. So none of it is exact, of course, and that's why they always have to manipulate the calendar just a little bit because if they didn't the calendars would always slowly get out of the wax so they have to figure out a way when to add an extra day we do that every four years to take care of the additional six hours and then of course every century or so we have to do something to the calendar to make sure that our winters and summers don't get exchanged over time but that's the difference between a tropical year and a side world year and just to make sure that we got that straight so imagine and here's our sun so imagine that here's the sun here's the earth and the stars on the other side over there and when the earth makes one complete trip in such a way that the sun the earth and the stars are exactly lined up again in the same way that's called a side real year but what's different is the solar year is the amount of time that it takes for this for the earth to go one trip around the sun in such a way that the sun will be directly above the equator again on March the 21st and that happens to be 
20 minutes or about 20 and a half minutes less than a complete tropical year. And that's what it is.